hello students in the today's session we'll discuss physiology of lipid transport now triglycerides and cholesterol esters are the lipids that circulate in blood both triglycerides and cholesterol esters are insoluble in water and thus these lipids are circulated in blood in the form of lipoproteins now when we talk about the structure of lipoproteins lipoprotein globule is made up of central hydrophobic core consisting of triglycerides and or cholesterol ester an outer hydrophilic shell which is made up of phospholipids free cholesterol and apoproteins now when we talk about the functions of triglycerides triglycerides break up into free fatty acids and provide energy to body unused calories are again stored as triglycerides in body tissues uh, one of the main tissue in which triglycerides are stored is the adipose tissue cholesterol is required for the synthesis of cell membrane it is required for the synthesis of cholesterol ester bile acids and vitamin d cholesterol is also a precursor of steroidal hormones like estrogen progesterone testosterone cortisol aldosterone and many others now let's talk about uh, types of lipoproteins and their transport lipoproteins are transported by three pathways exogenous transport endogenous transport and reverse cholesterol transport exogenous transport is the transportation of dietary lipids while endogenous transport is the transportation of lipids synthesized by the liver in the body now let's first talk about exogenous transport of lipids now dietary lipids that is the lipids uh, derived from the diet are absorbed in the intestine as chylomicron chylomicron uh, is a lipoprotein and uh, these are the biggest of all the lipoproteins uh, the size of a chylomicron ranges from 100 to 500 nanometer uh, this is the structure of a chylomicron the hydrophobic core uh, consists of uh, uh, triglycerides uh, 90% triglycerides about 90% triglycerides are shown in the red color and very small amount of cholesterol ester as shown here in the green color the hydrophilic shell is made up of free cholesterol phospholipids and apolipoproteins mainly apolipoprotein b48 apolipoprotein c2 and apolipoprotein e and these chylomicrons uh, they circulate in the blood now uh, endothelium bound uh, lipoprotein lipase lipoprotein lipase is an enzyme so endothelium bound lipoprotein lipase hydrolyzes triglycerides which are stored in the hydrophobic core into fatty acids so triglycerides which are stored in the chylomicron they are converted into fatty acids by the enzyme lipoprotein lipase now these fatty acids they pass into muscle cells and the adipose tissue in the muscle cells uh, these fatty acids are utilized as a source of energy while in the adipose tissue or in the fat cells these fatty acids are reconverted into triglycerides and stored so after the breakdown of triglycerides these chylomicrons they shrink in size and now these chylomicrons are termed as chylomicron remnants now size reduces from uh, 100 to 500 nanometers to about 30 to 50 nanometers the size of a chylomicron remnant is about it is as small as 30 to 50 nanometer and since triglycerides of uh, chylomicrons have been broken down now Uh, the chylomicron remnant it contains mainly cholesterol ester as shown here in the green color and small amount of triglycerides as shown in the red color and these chylomicron remnants these are engulfed by the liver 
this is how uh, chylomicron circulate in uh, the body and provides energy to the muscle cells and uh, they provide triglyce rights to the adipose tissue. Now let's talk about the endogenous transport. Now VLDL that is a very low density lipids are the lipoproteins synthesized by the liver. Now the VLDL consists mainly of triglycerides as shown here in the red color and small quantities of cholesterol asters. Diameter of VLDL is about 40 to 80 nanometer. This VLDL it circulates in the blood and again endothelium bound uh, lipoprotein lipase hydrolyzes triglycerides in VLDL to fatty acids and these fatty acids are utilized by the muscle cells as well as by the adipose tissue. So now the VLDL remnants are termed as to be the IDL that is the intermediate density lipoproteins and these IDL they contain comparatively less quantities of triglycerides and the size of the IDL also reduces and the size is about 30 to 35 nanometers. Now about, about half of the IDL that is the intermediate density lipoproteins are engulfed by the liver while the rest 50% they circulate in the blood. Again endothelium bound lipoprotein lipase uh, they hydrolyze triglycerides stored in the IDL and convert them into fatty acids and now these IDL they become LDL. There is further reduction in the levels of triglycerides. So now the LDL it mainly consists of cholesterol aster and only very insignificant quantity of triglycerides. So LDL primarily consists of cholesterol aster. About 60 to 70 percent of LDL is engulfed by the liver while the rest of the LDL circulates in the blood and reaches the peripheral tissue. Now these peripheral tissue, the cells of these peripheral tissue express LDL receptors and the LDL that is a low density lipoprotein, it binds to these LDL receptors which are expressed on the surface of peripheral tissues and this results in the uptake of LDL by the peripheral tissues. Now these peripheral tissues they utilize LDL for the synthesis of cell membrane, uh, for the synthesis of bile acids, vitamin D or for the synthesis of steroidal hormones as we have already discussed. Now excess LDL uh, results in the deposition of LDL in the body tissues which is termed as the xanthomas and uh, excess of the LDL also gets deposited in the coronary blood vessels resulting in the production of atheroma that is atherosclerosis which is the main risk factor or which is the main cause of uh, coronary vascular diseases. Now let's see what is the reverse cholesterol transport. Reverse cholesterol transport is mediated by high density lipoprotein. Now cholesterol is released into blood after degradation of membranes from the peripheral tissues and this cholesterol uh, it is collected by HDL and then this cholesterol is esterified and HDL transports this cholesterol to the liver and therefore a reverse cholesterol transport is a transportation of cholesterol from the peripheral tissues to the liver. Uh, HDL is termed as to be the uh, good cholesterol. Now let's see what happens if the levels of uh, VLDL rise in the blood. High levels of uh, VLDL that is the very low density lipoproteins or dry glycerides of more than uh, 150 milligram per deciliter increases the risk of pancreatitis and the risk factors associated with the uh, pancreatitis are uh, genetics that is the family history of hyperlipidemia, uh, intake of alcohol, then poor diet that is the diet that is rich in sugars like ice creams, sweetened uh, coffee drinks, sporty drinks, energy drinks they should be avoided as the body converts excess glucose into triglycerides uh, then foodstuffs like cakes, pastries and food items with saturated and uh, trans fats also increase triglycerides. Uh, increase in the level of uh, VLDL or risk of pancreatitis is also caused because of the obesity and metabolic syndrome like diabetes is one of the causes of uh, high triglycerides and uh, the risk associated with pancreatitis. Now. Uh, high LDL, 
high ldl leads to uh, development of lipid deposits uh, in the body tissues like skin tendons and subcutaneous tissues and these lipid deposits are called as xanthomas and further uh, high levels of lipids is one of the uh, most important risk factors for the diseases like uh, ischemia myocardial infarction uh, stroke and uh, uh, the risk factors which are associated with high ldl are poor diet that is a diet which is uh, rich in saturated and trans fats obesity lack of uh, exercise and uh, diseases like diabetes and uh, uh, now let's talk about the lipid profile uh, that is a desirable or optimum level of uh, lipids uh, which should be present in the body. Now total serum cholesterol it should be less than 200 milligram per deciliter. LDL cholesterol should be less than 100 milligram per deciliter. HDL cholesterol in male uh, should be 40 milligram per deciliter or higher than that. HDL cholesterol in females should be uh, 50 milligram per deciliter or higher than that. And triglycerides should be less than 150 milligram per deciliter. So this is all about physiology of uh, lipid transport. If this is helpful to you, kindly like, subscribe, comment and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.